that you got into town, everywhere you're going, you're stirring things up. It's just like Jesus, you know. Wherever Jesus went, he caused trouble. Yeah. And the same thing with Todd, he's just causing trouble all over Orlando. So thank yeah. God. Amen. It would be a shame for a hundred evangelists to come to town and nobody gets saved. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm glad that I'm glad that you guys are making an impact. Todd, would you just come and share whatever's um, on come your on. floor? Woo! except for him, and that's enough. Yeah, and I'm so thankful, and uh, I've got the good privilege of of learning God in my workplace, of learning God in my family, that everybody was really angry and really rebelling, and, and dude, I was crazy, you know, and everybody thought how nuts I was, and, and everybody was against me. Now, almost everyone in my family is in the kingdom, Hallelujah. on my wife's side and on my side. Oh, come and on. I get the privilege of every place that I've worked at, most of the people that I have contact with are now Christians. Oh and it's not because of what I preach, it's because of how I live. Yeah. Because the gospel isn't just a matter of, of what you say, it's, right. it's how you live your life. It's just it's a matter of talk, it's a matter of power. Yeah. Right. It's the power of a life lived, of proclaiming oh. Jesus, but not just proclaiming Him, but walking like Him, living like Him. That's right. There's no area that's too hard for us. We need to be very careful because sometimes we get resistance out here. We, we, we think that the resistance out here can shut down God. Right. There is no place that has a closed heaven. The only closed heaven is between our ears because Jesus right. opened the heavens legally through righteousness and they never closed again. Right. And if we see what we have everywhere we go, we'll be a divine encounter. I don't have to pray for one. I need to understand that I am one. Amen. So everywhere I go, I get to have God display His glory and Himself through my life. They get the good privilege of representing that. So evangelism can't be boiled down to ministry. It has to be a lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Evangelism is a lifestyle. It's not just something I do. It's something that I am. It's not just something I do when I go somewhere. It's something that I am and it never shuts down. God doesn't shut down. If you look at the life of Jesus, it never closed down. It was constant. It was all the time. He poured out. Even when the disciples thought, we're going to chill, Jesus said he had compassion. He was moved with compassion. So it can't just be a compassion to see somebody pray a prayer. It has to be a compassion to see somebody's lives get changed. To see the impact. It's not the fear of hell. It's the driving force of heaven. The kingdom of God is not just a, it's not just praying that one day we get there. It's about heaven coming in right now. Possessing our soul so that we can destroy hell for a living. So that has to be it. The, there has to be more than just getting there. It has to be heaven getting in here. So that I can thump hell every day everywhere I go. And I've had the good privilege of watching that happen every day, everywhere. Yeah. It's not just me. I know a lot of people that I'm friends with that are in here that are doing it constantly because it's just who they are. We don't have to do anything. If we do, it's evangelism sometimes gets gets tiring because we have to perform. It's not performance. No, right. It's not the doing. It's the out of place of being. The Beatitudes is what Jesus said, not the do attitudes. Uh, yeah. It's the be. So it's out of who we are. One of the first things that I learned in the gospel before I even, before anything, is that I stayed in Ephesians 1 for a year when I first got born again. And I didn't go out of there because I found in there that it says I'm accepted. That's key. Because if I'm doing evangelism and I'm going to go out there and I'm just doing it, I can get rejected. But it's impossible for you to reject me because you didn't accept me. If God accepted me, you cannot take away what you didn't give me. So if I'm going to walk in that place that I've been accepted by love itself, I can walk in such a power of God and such a fragrance of Him everywhere I go to where it doesn't matter how angry, how bitter, how mad someone is. The walls come down because love is in action. Yeah. Love is not just something that we proclaim. Love is not just something that we talk about. Love is a lifestyle. Yeah. Everywhere Jesus went, he loved people. He was moved with compassion. And the compassionate heart of God wrecked people around him. Yeah. And we've got the privilege to walk like that. It says, as he is, so are we. Mm. As he is loved, so are we. So everywhere we go, we get to... And I'm telling you that this thing is awesome because you can shine with such an amazing goodness of God. The yeah. glory of God in your life that it convicts the people that are in front of you. Wow. That they don't even... You don't even 
have to go after it just by you walking in His goodness in the presence of God and the flavor of God on your life, the flavor of Jesus Christ. Christ in us, the hope of glory, is the mystery revealed. But Christ coming out of us is that hope being made manifest. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all about giving away what we freely receive, right? Yeah. I've had the privilege of walking and seeing this on a daily basis, and it's awesome. I'm just going to share a couple of testimonies that Daniel told me to provoke you. My, my heart is not to, to draw you to say, wow, Todd, it's not about me. It's about us as the body of Christ. But it's to provoke you to, the, to know that, man, we can do this. Like, because we already are this. It's awesome. So I haven't gotten the privilege of going and seeing that, seeing this state, seeing that. But I want it here in America. I want to yeah. see the reality of this thing take place in America. Where people get wrecked everywhere we yeah. go. Yeah. So where no one gets out of this thing. Because I can yeah. proclaim them and claim them for the kingdom. And they can't get out of it. Really. Um, <laughs> gosh, there's so many things that happen every day. Last night we were in a restaurant. And we talked to a lady at, at just even last night. And it was at some Italian place. Carabas. Yeah. And our waitress, we started talking to her. She's wow, and, he, and she's just... You know, kind of resistant, kind of angry. That is not hard for God. Hey, I don't even have enough faith to be an atheist. <laughs> faith in nothing. You, come on, man. So we just talked to her and just loved her, and she's like resistant. Just, okay, yeah, well, you know, I, I believe that how can we come from a rib? Which means that she has some kind of an understanding of the gospel. Yeah. Right? She wouldn't have said that. Right. So I just said to her, I said, oh, all right. So we left, and everybody walked out. And I told her, I said, you know, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to just bring me up for a soda, if you can. And she said, oh, okay, all right, why? Wow. So, and we got talking to some other people, some people from a, a big Baptist church somewhere. I don't know. And God healed them and made them whole and just loved on these people. And it was so good, just lifestyle, man, just loving on them. And I came back to this girl, and she says, she goes, yes, yeah. she goes, okay, well, I don't know why you're doing this. And I, I, just, I just blessed her, just radically blessed her financially. So to seed into her. Why? Because she deserved it? No, if we get what we deserve, we go to hell. Yeah. So people, it's not deserving. It's, it's mercy. We've been given mercy, so we give it, right? We show it. So I just blessed her. She, why are you doing this? I said, you know, it's not because of anything, but I want you to understand that God's not a thief. God loves you. Here's the important thing. See, uh, everybody is equally important. Each soul is equally important. You cannot have yeah. It's yeah. very dangerous to have more of a love for souls than you do for people. Right. We have to have a love for people. I, 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 know, that, I know that that's where Reinhardt is. Reinhardt loves people. You can see it. Daniel loves people. We've got to love people, not just be about. We've got to be about people, man. He loves people. Come on, you're going to approach different people all the time, and, and, and every person is equally important. Don't wait to be led to the one and miss the thousand in between. Right. If you can look at somebody and say, you know what, Jesus didn't pay a price for them, then don't feel led. Come on, man, that's just not right, right? We can love everybody in front of us. So I just said to her, I said, look, and God showed me specifically why she was an atheist and why she turned her back on God and what happened and what was the reasons why she did. She's like, wow. And I said, you know, when you were younger, this happened to your sister and this and that and in the name of Jesus. And then you had an uncle that was in your life and he this and he that. With word of knowledge, just the sharing. We need to walk in the spirit. We yes. know the heart. What? Why somebody's deceived? If our motive is his heart. Yeah. And yeah. so she's like, "This is crazy." I said, "God just loves you so much. You're amazing." She's like, "I can see. I can see it." She said, "I just want to thank you so much for the privilege of being able to talk to you today. You're amazing. Thank you." She goes, "No, thank you. Can I please give you a hug?" And she just lost. Dude, this is so different. This gospel is bigger than, than we think. God is bigger and better than we think. He's so good. He is true. It's awesome. Right? Come on. There's so many different things. I'm going to share two more. Can I share two more? Go for it. I need to keep up like looking at the clock. I'm not, time is not on my side. <laughs> okay, so we went to, we just went to a restaurant to share a restaurant. And I'm going to share a school thing. Because schools are important that we touch the schools too. It's just good. Um, we went into a Texas Roadhouse in America. They have them. They're steak restaurants. And we walked in and we're up at the front counter and just saying, "Man, thanks." And I'm with a bunch of a bunch of people. We're getting ready to do some stuff and and we're just sitting down to eat. But we have to wait there. And we're standing on the peanuts. You know, I'm there because it's a place you crush peanuts and stuff. But anyway, <laughs> and the girl said, "I said, man, I said you're you're standing there." I said, "You know, it's funny." I said, I really, really hear in my heart that you have a problem with your back, and it's trouble with you. She's like, yeah, I mean, I'm all, I said, I understand, but this is more than that. It came from sports, it came from field hockey when you were growing up. You, you twist it to the side, you hurt your back, and it's never been able to be fixed. And she was like, 
Yeah. I said, can I see your hand? I didn't ask her to pray for her. I just got her hand. I don't need her permission. All I need is an access point. Yeah. And they just said, Father, thank you in the name of Jesus. Now, you may not believe in healing, but Jesus does. Yes. He just, he just does. Come on. Uh, you're too late in my life. I've seen it a million times, and you can't talk me out of it. It's a done deal. So I just think, and she's burst out laughing at me with her friend. <laughs> I can't believe this guy. And they're laughing at me. And I said, God, thank you. And I said, check your back. And she said, oh, my God. I said, isn't that funny? <laughs> And she got so convicted of where she was at, not because I had to tell her she needed to be, but because the goodness of God brings that. One-on-one -on -one encounters are so important and so powerful. And God cares about each individual. We've, we've got to have a heart of God to see people the way that God sees them. Wow. We can't, it says we, we don't regard anybody according to the flesh anymore. One died, then all died. It means that I don't have the right to look at anybody according to what they've done or the mess that they're in or the cuss words that are coming out of their mouth. I have to see them how God sees them and hear them how God hears them. And if I would dare to open up my heart to believe that his heart, his heart is in me, I'll see people that they're created about and I'll be able to pull out the golden people so they'll see hope and they'll understand that there's more to this thing than just getting to heaven. It's about living heaven flowing through you constant where heaven becomes my destination and destroying hell is my mission every day. People need that in their life to destroy hell. So she's like, this is crazy. I said, come here a few years. I go to church. And she turned her back on me, the other one. And I said, ma'am, I said, and she didn't want to talk to me. So then they led us to our table and we walked by. And the lady that was leading us to our table was the hostess that God healed. So she's her mom, and I'm just sharing the gospel of the kingdom with her a little, you know? And we're going, she has this, her menu on her, the fear of God is on her because God's good and he loves people. The fear of God is his love. <laughs> so good. She's doing this and she's carrying it. We walk around down the corner and I see a guy at the table in a packed restaurant on a Friday night. What a good place for God to show up. Sure. And I said, you've got a knee brace. What's going on, sir? He said, I have an apartment. Many. I said, what is it from our friends? And the wife is like, who does this guy think? I don't look like you're uh, you know, crazy looking. You know. <laughs> so maybe. She goes, she goes, what do you want? I said, I just want to pray for her. And the hostess is, is awestruck because she's healed and her heart is touched and she's convicted. She's not going to shut it down. And I said, can I pray for your husband, please? She goes, why? I said, because God will heal him. The hostess is like, she can't help. She's in a restaurant trying to lose her job. And so the, the lady's like, why? I said, because God's going to touch his knee. She goes, whatever. I said, can I? And she goes, whatever you want. And I said, oh, Thank you. So I knelt down and prayed. But listen, she can't reject me because I've been accepted by my father. Amen. Nobody can reject what God's accepted. It's majorly important. Otherwise, we're living by works and we'll be shut down. Love never fails. You cannot fail if it's in love. Impossible to fail. So I pray for this guy's knee and he starts to freak out. He goes, what is going on right now? So Jesus is fixing your knee. She goes, are you serious? To her husband. <laughs> It's on fire. And I had a word of knowledge about the lady having a neck fusion. I said, your neck is fused, man. I said, if God wants to fix your neck, she hey, goes, come please on. pray for me. We prayed, and God unfused her neck. In the rest of the yeah! Listen, this thing is clear. And it's major. Yeah. And we're missing opportunities every day. Yeah. We just submit ourselves to the heart of God. Yeah. It's very possible. Yeah. It's very possible. Oh, but we have to have a different heart when come we on. this thing. His heart. Yeah. Our objective can't be to try to go for their juggler vein. Right. Our objective has to be to go for their heart. Yeah. It has to be. It's very important. I'm ready to get so saved. I talked to them. They knew Jesus. They're in a church. They, the lady behind me, she's like, This is crazy. I can't believe this is happening. And I said, Come on. And there's our host, our lady at our table, our waiter, is right there. She goes, Our waitress, she goes, She's next. So we get to the table, we pray for this lady, and she gets radically healed, her back gets healed, her foot gets healed, she's radically touched by God. She goes back and she gets all the waiters and the waitresses to come out. And they all come out to the table, like, well, not all of them, because they're serving, but like, there are 13 waiters and waitresses around the table. They're like, what does God say about me? Come on! To them, we're prophesying, we're sharing the heart of God. And Christians, they left Christians when they left the restaurant that night. But if we don't see people like that, so it happened all night. Other waiters and waitresses came out. We had two hours of eating both kinds of food, the will of God. 
And that too, right? Yes. One more testimony. You all right? Hannah? Go for it. You good? Are you guys okay? Yeah. I'm really excited. This happens every day. I get the good pleasure of, of living on the donkey that Jesus rides in on. So good. Come on. Who can carry the king? Come on. Awesome. We've got something to give the world. We've got our lives to give the world. Come on. I'm standing in front of God's finest. And man, we can do this. It's really easy. Yes. All you have to do is be this. It's just becoming love. It's really easy. It really is. So I, I have a, a, a school that, that is around my house that is called, um, that's the, it's a school that actually, it's called Dover High School. And, and they invited me in um, to do, if they knew about my record and stuff, they probably wouldn't have got a sponge. It's really good because I twisted my whole body. But they invited me to come, and it was a religious debate class. And they said, we want, we want you to come and, and just debate religion, Christianity. And I'm, I'm so done with debating, dude. You think yeah. since I'm finished, man. I'm judged, dude. The gospel is amazing. You cannot debate Jesus. God's bigger. I've had so many debaters come and get in my face. And God knows the heart. So I'll just let them talk. And then God will go and pierce the heart and bring them to God. I don't have to be concerned about the debate, the questions. God has answers. He is the answer. Yeah. And so I don't need to sit there and, oh my gosh, what am I going to say? Man, what? Dude, I just have to have a relationship with the king. Now I have to know the Holy Spirit wants him way more than I do. And I really want him. <laughs> one. So I get to this class and I walk in and, and the teacher says, okay, Todd, they had two Mormons come in the day before I came. They had a Hindu come in. They have Muslims come in. They have Wiccans come in. They have them all come in. They come in and they debate. The kids just go to town. They hammer these people. And I'm there and I'm like, and I come in the kids look at me like, what is going on? As soon as I come in. So, so Mr. Mr. Weaver says, Todd, in a second I'm going to open it up. For, for debate, and the kids are going to ask you questions, and you just get to answer their questions. Talk about Christianity. Okay, folks, this is Todd White. He's here to talk about Christianity. And the kids are like, what? And every hand went up. Right away. They're ready to drill me. That's awesome. Yeah, God's ready for the drill. It's so good. And I, and I said, and I, and I looked at a girl, and I said, ma'am? And she goes, yeah. And she started to go, and I said, can I ask you a question before you start? She says, okay. I said, you know, I said, you've wanted your whole life to, to be like a child doctor, to work with children, to be a pediatric nurse. You're going to be amazing. As a matter of fact, you're, you've already got accepted. When you graduate, you're going to do that. That's so awesome. Your heart has been for children your whole life. And God loves you so much, and you're going to be a great pediatric Come nurse. Come on, Todd. What? <laughs> That's what her profession is. That's what she wants to do. Yeah. She was overwhelmed. Every hand went down immediately. <laughs>
God knows. Yeah. God is bigger than that. But our motive has to be love. So this guy gets completely healed. He stands up. He's got his kidneys on fire. He gets a hug him. I said, man, on. I see government on your life. And, and here he had to call the government. He's the vice principal of the high school. Wow. He came wow. in just to hear a Christian view. And got whacked with God. And loved God. Wow. By the Holy Spirit. Because he loves people. And the students are like overwhelmed. And the class is now up praying. Christians that have been dormant now are out of the closet. In the class. And they're praying with me. For people on fire. These kids are in this class. Yeah. for today. The second class has no idea what's going on. on. This class is going to lunch. The other ones are coming in. The same thing happened for another 45 minutes. Same thing. Now we've got a problem because the class, the first one that went to lunch, is bringing people back from lunch. Come and see something that happened to me today. Come and see a man who told me everything about me. And this other class came in. So we've got to pack that lunchtime. The students refused to go to lunch for the second class. They stayed there. And they had to say, talk to God. I came in and they just said, just tell us about Jesus. Uh, yeah. So Father, thank you, Jesus, and God. For the same thing upon the people, God. In Jesus' name, let us be provoked, God, to a lifestyle. A lifestyle that is truly led by the Spirit, God, because we're sons. God, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.